let me show you on this video how to create a cake order form for your cake business. So let's get started right now. Welcome to Job Form. My name is George. And on this video, I'm going to show you how to create a cake order form from scratch. And I'm also going to show you the cake order forms that we have available on templates so you can get started right away. So this is my job form dashboard. And the first thing I want to show you are the templates that we have available. So on the dashboard, head on over to templates, go to form templates and in form templates. We're going to find several available categories right here. On this case, we want to search for cake order form templates. So let me select that for you. Let's go to order forms and we have bakery order forms or cake order forms, which are kind of similar. So in this case, I'm going to do the cake order forms. There's several templates available that you can take advantage right now to build your order form. So you don't have to start from scratch. You can actually get started from here and modify it to your personal needs. So in this case, let me show you this one. For example, the cake order form, we can go ahead and preview it straight from the template section and we can actually fill it out from here to see if we want to actually use this template. So maybe we find this one useful. It has the options that we need and we can get started right away. Maybe it's already practically ready for us. We can use this template and it's going to take us to the actual builder where we can customize it if we need it or just go ahead and publish it. Another template that I want to show you that I really love is the holiday cake order form. Holidays are always around the corner and we have to take advantage of this. So in this case, this is the holiday cake order form template. And again, we can go ahead and test it out from here, fill it out and see how it actually flows and to see if this is something that we like so we can use on our own business. So again, if you like it, use this template and it's going to take you to the cake order form. So there is no excuse to not get started right away to use a cake order form. This is going to save you a ton of time when you are taking in orders. You're going to be more professional and customers are actually going to look at you as a more professional business. So it's a great option. Okay. Now, in this case, we're going to get started from scratch because I want to show you how to do it so you can build your own. Right. So it's going to create a form. We're going to start from scratch. We're going to use classic form. And we're going to add the elements that we need to get this cake order form started, all right? So on the left, we have our elements that we can drag inside of here. So we want to begin with the basics. For example, we want to know their name. We want to know their address, their phone number. And then we want to add some particular elements that are based for the cake order form. So these would be like the general ones. And then we want to get into the actual questions that are going to help us on our business know what type of cake they want. So, for example, the first one we're going to drag in here is the drop down. We want to know, for example, the cake size that we need. So how many servings do you pretend to have this cake for? For example, is it going to be for five people, 10, 20? Maybe it's a wedding, 100 people. So let's get started with this question. OK, here we go. So it's cake size for the title and we're going to go into properties. And on sub label, I'm going to give it a little bit more of detail. So in this case, we want to tell them why you need to respond to this question and how to respond. it. So in this case, to determine the size, please let us know how many people would be the cake for. So let's go ahead and set here. For example, we can say five to 10 people, 10 to 20 people or 20 to 50 people and so on and so forth. We have a simple drop down menu just for that. Or you could just go from small, medium, large if you already have some sizes for your bakery. So it's up to you how you decide how you are going to determine the size of your cake. Okay. The next question that we want to ask is the shape of the cake. Remember, this is a custom order form, so we want to know what shape. Let's go again with another drop down menu. In this case, I'm going to size this to make it uh, smaller. So I'm going to go back into properties, advance, and I'm going to shrink it. And I'm also going to shrink this one. We don't need to take up a lot of space for this. Okay. So the next one is going to be cake shape, right? Cake shape. So some, some people might have a preference for a shape of a cake, maybe square, rectangle, round, or custom, right? So it depends what type of shape they want. And all this information is going to help us decide how much we're going to charge for that cake and know what type of cake they want, right? So the next question we want to ask is, for example, what type of cake they want? Chocolate, vanilla, red velvet, etc. And we're going to bring in another drop down here. And again, we're going to make it small. So we're going to shrink it here in the advanced options. And then we're going to say type of cake. And then we're going to give it the options. So we're going to do chocolate. We're going to do red velvet velvet and vanilla. So again, we're going to keep it simple. You add the list of your type of cakes on your personal bakery, right? And the next one we're going to add is choose the filling. You can use different type of 
options here, for example. Um, in this case, I'll do, for example, the multiple choice. Again, we're going to shrink it first. So let's go into properties, go advanced, shrink it. And the difference with this one is that they can select multiple choices. So I'm going to say, for example, choose filling. All right. So in this case, you might have several options for the filling. Maybe it has uh, several layers. So we want to have a different filling for different layers. So we give it several options. So we could say chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, and so on and so forth. I'll go ahead and remove this one for now. So this one lets them select multiple choices here, multiple choices. And in properties, we can actually hover, use the hover text here. So we can say choose maximum and we can also give them the option to only choose two. For example, in surveying, we can do an entry limit and we'll say maximum two and they have to at least select one. So they can't skip this without at least selecting one of these. And in options, we also have the option to do a spread column. So it looks a little bit more neat. In case you have several options, you don't want to have a long list. You want to have it a little bit more neat here. And that's one of the options that you have available. Now, the next one I want to add is a question to know if they have allergies. So we'll use a long text here and we're going to ask, do you have allergies? And we added a long text for this question so we know more about them. So they have the option to type in the information that we need to know in case they have an allergy, right? And the next question we want to ask is to know if they have a special request. So in this case, we're going to add another long text and we're going to ask, do you have any special requests? And we give them a big box so they can add their information there. We're also going to add a file upload. That means that we're going to give them the option to upload an image of a cake that they like as a reference, if that's an option that you want to provide. For example, we can say photo or sketch of the cake. So they can either upload a photo of a cake that they like or just sketch it out on a node and upload it here. And we can also view it. So we are on the same page per se. So it's a great option to have available here. And all these will be viewable when they fill it out. And the last one we want to add here is the email. Since we didn't add it, we want, we want to add it here at the end. So let's go ahead and shrink these to have a more neat and tight form. So there's no need to grab a big space just for this. And here we go. All right. So we have the form built here for the cake order form. Let's give this a name. Cake order form. And we're practically good to go. So it's up to you what type of elements you want to add, what type of questions you want to ask, depending on your business and the things that you need to know. Now, once you're done with your order form, we can actually beautify this with the form designer. We can use color schemes that might fit already your business needs. And we just go ahead and select it here or we can change page colors, form color, the font color, etc., or use styles and themes. So there's available themes already available here that we can just go ahead and use. For example, if I want to use this one to beautify it, and here we go. So kind of uh, playful there, which would be a great form for something that's for a party. So a lot of colors, nice looking form, and we can be good to go. Now, in this case, this is a key quarter form. But what if you want to actually take the order form from here? That means that we can add a payment gateway to this so we can take the order straight from here. So it's not just about notifying us what they actually want. We can actually have this in order form that alongside with the payment that we can receive it as soon as they order. So in payments, there's several payment gateways available here, depending on your favorite payment gateway. Just go ahead and select that there's Square, PayPal, Authorized Net, Stripe, etc. All the popular ones are going to be available here. We are going to drag PayPal personal. Go ahead and drag it here. And then it's going to ask us for the basic information. In this case, since it's the PayPal personal, it's going to ask me for the email and I'll just add a test email for testing purposes. And I can select the currency here. And then it's going to ask me what type of payment do I want to receive? Is it going to be for products? And I can create these products in this case, for example, small cake, medium, large, custom, etc. And I have the option to sell subscriptions, user defined amount or collect donations. If you want to have a user defined amount, it's an open box where they can add the amount that they want to pay. And that could be a good option just for the reserving the spot for the personal cake. It doesn't mean that that's what they're going to pay, but they can start off from $10 just to have that order form in so they can save a spot per se. All right. In this case, we're going to sell products. Let's go ahead and continue and we're going to create our first product. So let's go ahead and edit this and I'm going to say small cake. Here we go. Small cake is going to cost uh, $45. Here we go. And this is going to say small cake for five to 20 servings. And this is just an example, right? Choose an image. So 
So in this case, let me select from my image. Here we go. I just added a cake and you could add more images to this, right? We can auto scale the image, which would be a good idea. So they're all the same size. We can make it required. Select as default as the first one as the first choice. But in this case, we are going to save it. Here we go. It's now saved and it's been added. We have several options for this. We can add a quantity selector. So in case you want to allow them to select several options, you can do a drop down to select quantity or text box. In this case, we don't want to have this available since this is practically a custom order form, right? Let's go ahead and select cancel. Then we have the stock options. We can enable a stock option available here to not sell too many. For example, we can select stock of 100, 50, 10, et cetera, and enable low stock alert to let us know once this has reached a certain limit, right? So let's keep it basic. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's go back and let's go ahead and create one more. Here we go. And this is going to be the medium cake. And this is going to be $69 and medium cake for 20 to 40 people. All right. This is just an example. Again, I'm going to use the same image just for testing purposes. And let's go ahead and save this. There we go. We now have two sizes available, small and medium, just for testing purposes. And let me go ahead and edit this because it says sold out. Let's disable the stock. All right. Let's go ahead and save it. And here we go. So we have two available options and now it's available to order right away once they ordered it through this form. There's also a really great option to add an inventory to this order form. That means that we're not going to oversell by using a widget that I'm going to add right now. So if we go to widgets and I select inventory, here it is, and drag it inside of here, we are going to open up a load more of options available for this. So for example, in this case, we have an inventory form, which is going to allow us to keep track and in an inventory of our case, right? So in this case, for example, description, it could be cakes and then the product image. So again, this is optional. You can do it by a link, the available quantity. We can say 100 and it could be a drop down. We can select the quantity range, submit value with label. If we enable this, then we can go ahead and submit it. In this case, we don't. So we're good to go like that. Counter label. Will it remain? Hide quantity. So in this case, no, we can see right here that there's a hundred remaining, which I would think for this purpose, we would want to hide it. We don't want to display that amount there, but it's up to you. Okay. Now, once we're good to go, we go ahead and save this. And we can now keep track of the inventory with this widget that we've just added. So it's super practical to use this on the order form. Now, once we're good to go, we can go ahead and start taking orders right away. So if we go ahead and preview this in preview form, we can go ahead and fill that out. In this case, I'll use the fill form for testing purposes. And since none of these are required for now, we can go ahead and continue without having to fill out every single aspect of this form. I can make these required if I like, right? So here we go. We can go ahead and submit. And it's going to take us to the payment gateway. Now, in this case, I have not enabled the payment gateway. So that's why it won't go through, but it gives you an idea of how this works. So you fill this out and you're good to go. Now, what if we want to add this order form to a website? Well, I'm going to show you that too on this video. Let's head out of the preview section. And if you want to publish this, we'll go into publish and we can go ahead and share this link right away. We can open in a new tab. We can also create the QR code that we can display on our bakery counter. So someone that comes in can go ahead and scan the QR code and order this cake from there. So that means that they don't have to wait a long line to order this cake. You can take orders straight from your counter by the QR code. And the other option that I want to show you is the embed on the website. So let's go ahead and copy this code. And in this case, I'm going to show you on my WordPress site where we're going to add this. So let's go into pages. And in this case, I'm going to add a new page. And I'm going to say cake order form. And I can add it straight from here. So in this case, I'll do a custom HTML, add it. Go ahead and publish this. Here we go. Let's go ahead and pre preview this page. And here we go. We now have this form embedded on a website. So you can go ahead and share the link from your personal website. That is going to look really professional when you have, for example, yourcustombusiness.com at ordering cake. So it's going to look really professional when you send that link out. So it's up to you how you are going to use this. Like I mentioned before, you can go ahead and share it via link, email, QR code, social media, etc. And you have several options available to create your cake order form for your cake business. 
So this is going to take your business to the next level because it's going to save you a lot of time and you're going to look way more professional than just having manual work done on a physical page. And you'll have this form available and all these details are going to be available for you to preview over here on tables. So once you start taking orders, we're going to view all of the orders right here on the table view. So every single order form is going to be available here with their information, with their images for the sketches, etc. all available here to keep track and be more professional and organized. So there you go. That's how you're going to create your cake order form on job form. We thank you all for watching and please let us know here in the comments what you think about these cake order forms templates that we have available and what you would like to see in the future. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that little bell notification to get notified when new videos come out. And that's a wrap.